writers, you're listening to the Kobo Writing Life Podcast, where we bring you insights and inspiration for growing your self-publishing business, coming to you from Kobo's headquarters in Toronto. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Kobo Writing Life Podcast. I'm Stephanie. Today, Marina is joining me. Hey, everyone. And on today's episode, we are sitting down with Adam Cushman, who is the founder of Film 14, a company that specializes in book trailers. So Adam talks to us and really goes over the entire process of creating a book trailer. He also talks a little bit about how the book trailer can be incorporated into your marketing and your advertising campaign. And I also assumed that it would be fairly expensive to have a book trailer, but that is not true. There are many options available to you and different styles, 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 and also plans that an author can purchase to have a book trailer created for them. So without further ado, here is our interview. So, Adam, thank you so much for joining us on the Kobo Writing Life podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. And so just before we begin, we have a lot of questions, but can you tell our listeners a bit about you and how you got your start in filmmaking? In filmmaking, sure. Uh, It was fairly early on um, when I was younger. Mostly it involved playing with my Star Wars toys alone, and I would have these great battles and these epic narratives and then um, eventually my mom would get concerned and, and suggest that I invite friends over and I was reluctant, but I would, I would go for it. And then sometimes they would come and they would want to stage narratives and, and make decisions. And I was like, no, that's not really going to work. <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you have to have your mom pick you up. You know, that, that kind of was the beginning. I mean, I was always making stories in my head and, you know, just going off into my own universe. So I would say it started fairly young. And then I wrote a lot. I was, I was writing short stories all through childhood and when I was a teenager. And then really started uh, around 18 or 19, just starting to write scripts and seeing films that I wanted to make and envisioning them. Awesome. So as the founder of Film 14, can you discuss why you decided to start your own company? Sure. It was largely accidental. I had come from the writing world. I had published a lot of fiction and I was working on a novel at the time. And I had a friend who was self-publishing a book who asked me if I would direct his trailer and I had no idea what that was or what those looked like. And going online and and sort of seeing what was out there or what had been out there up until that time, I was like, wow, yes, a trailer would be so cool, but nobody really does them very well. Mm -hmm. And no one really does them with any sort of, I don't know, art or passion, seemingly. Um, There were exceptions, but mostly it was kind of slideshowy. You know, directing his was very rewarding because there was so much freedom to move around creatively and sort of discover this form you were you were involved in. And anyway, he, he really loved it. And within a few days after people saw it, I had other author friends asking me to make them one. And at that point, it was kind of just became a business. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So did you always just know you wanted to focus on book trailers specifically? Within Film 14? Yes. Yes, yes, pretty much. I mean, the, the idea came up that maybe we should, you know, look into other formats, you know, more music videos and things like that. But I felt like, you know, we have a chance here to be exclusively for the publishing industry, for authors, and I would rather focus on that. So as your like, company grew, did you notice a shift in publishers reaching out to you specifically and like, self-published authors? Or was it something over time that you were realizing that, oh, book trailers are like, a really popular thing and it's now grown because of new social media platforms? There's so many ways to answer that question. I feel like they started reaching out pretty much right away. In the beginning, it was a combination of self-published authors and authors who were publishing through traditional houses, but found that they weren't getting a ton of marketing put behind them, at least not not video. And so they came to us and they liked what we did. It was about a year, year and a half in when we started to get a lot of contacts from big publishers and certain imprints looking to do uh, video work together. Awesome. That's pretty cool. I'm really curious, actually, so about the whole process from start to finish. Um, do you mind talking a little bit about that? Um, let's course. say, for example, from when the author reaches out to you to the final product. Sure. The straightforward version is that we get hired, we then read the book, and the team adapts a treatment. And it's mm-hmm. usually a visualized and scripted treatment. So there are reference photos. So you can sort of get the full idea of what it's going to look like. And, and the direction it's going in and the tone and everything like that. And so we develop that with the author, um, sort of going back and forth with notes until we get the green light, mm-hmm. at which point we do casting. And the way we cast typically, if, if we're showing faces, because that's a whole other subject, whether to show human faces in the mm-hmm. trailer or not, 
But in, let's say for this example that we are, we'll then ask the author in their dream universe who they would cast <laughs> as the major characters and we kind of cast according to type that way. And then we shoot and then we come back with the rough cut and just, you know, ask for notes and then we wrap up. Usually takes about 60 days. Oh, that's pretty quick. Yeah, I thought it'd be longer than that. It should be. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, uh, the thing is, though, I mean, sometimes it is, but more often than not, authors and always publishers uh, come to us with like, you know, 30 to 40 days to go. Crunch time. Yeah. Is there a specific length that they need to be? Or like, do you try to be like, it needs to be under three minutes, maybe a minute? You know, at the same time, leave that up to the author. But my feeling on it is that I have a a few feelings on it. So (laughs) under 60 seems to be the sweet spot, just in terms of, um, you know, traction and and views. Now, there's this theory that's been going around the last few years or so that everyone's attention span is limited. And with, you know, the what social media or whatever has caused it, that people just have no attention span and, and they will check out right away. And I don't believe that, actually. I don't, I don't subscribe to that. I, I think people often are bored and will check out very quickly if they feel bored. But if they're compelled, they forget all sense of time and they, they kind of get lost in the dream of what you've created. So I think ideally that's what you want and then length doesn't become an issue anymore. But for the most part, unless we're doing short film interpretations of the books rather than trailers, they tend to be under, at least under 90 seconds. That's pretty interesting, the short film. How, like, how long would you say a short film would be if someone preferred to do that? It really can be as long as you want. I mean, once you go down that road, you're, you're making something that does more than promote a book, which is what I have always said these, these videos should do. Mm-hmm. Longevity out of them and scalability out of them. It's interesting that you mention uh, the short film uh, option as well. Is that something that comes up a lot? Um, Is there a niche for that? Um, What's the situation with the short films? It does come up a lot, uh, especially because you can get more mileage out of a short film because it can be something that promotes your book. And at the same time, it can be something that you use uh, to take to festivals or to tease the movie rights, which you can do with the trailer, but this sort of opens up the form for you. As far as length of a short trailer, short film would go, it really can be as long as it wants. For programming at festivals, you want to try and stay like under 10 minutes Mm -hmm. to have a better shot at getting in. But it really depends on the story. I mean, we've recently done a few short story collections. One is about a minute, 10 seconds, Mm -hmm. and just has flashes of all the stories, like, like basic imagery from them, set to a musical score. Another one we did was a straight up adaptation we took a three page story and it's about 10 minutes long. So it, it really depends on the story, the tone, the director, a lot of things, but I would say keeping it under 10 is ideal. That's really interesting about the festivals in general. Mm-hmm. I never even considered that, but I can see yeah. the value of uh, something a little bit longer for those. Another thing that I was curious about, did you notice any difference so far in the type of content that let's say a traditional publishing house will ask for versus a self-published author? Do you find that there's overlap? There's a few distinctions. Um, the big publishers tend to want quality. So they want the, the best cameras and they want you know, the best image quality available. Mm-hmm. The things I've noticed are that they're very aggressive with young adult. Mm-hmm. The publishers, I mean, getting behind young adult and getting cinematic trailers for, for those titles, especially those that are going to be more popular or that they think are going to have larger audiences. I know that they also kind of see the movie at the end of the tunnel because they're very popular for adaptation. That's really cool. Um, so that's the main objective, kind of? I don't know if it's the main objective. Um, I'm sure for the author. For well, it doesn't the, hurt to try. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and the other fundamental difference is going back to the, you know, whether to show faces or not question. I think the publishers are generally leaning more toward keeping the, the features negative and mm-hmm. showing portions of faces rather than casting. That's interesting. Yeah. Now let's talk about the real stuff. <laughs> I'm very <Okay>. curious because <laughs> sure. I really did think that this would be a very expensive project to work on. Do you find that it's something that is budget friendly? Budget friendly. I love that. There's a lot of ways to, it can be. So when we started and we got into this, we, we did our research and we saw what companies were out there and they're, they're really not a lot of companies doing what we do. Mm-hmm. At least there are not a lot of companies doing solely what we do and definitely not on the cinematic level. So we knew this was going to be attractive to people. And at the same time, we knew, you know, I'm a writer myself and I know what it is to be kind of on your own 
in terms mm -hmm. of you know promotion. So we wanted to have price points set at, at pretty much every level so that it could be accessible to everybody. So the, the upshot is this. There are affordable options, at least in terms of what we offer, that are not, let's say, uh, under $1,000, mm -hmm. that are not shot live action, that don't include actors, but that are light years better than, than what the slideshow iMovie oh, yes. are doing. Home I kind of, of imagine them all in one dungeon. Just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, then once you get into actual productions, imagine anywhere between three and three and ten, it can go higher. And I guess it's with the things that you start adding on, right? Correct. And the camera you use, and and just how specific you want to be. And you know, our higher end, our studio head trailer, which is the the most expensive, is usually ten plus. It's the highest you quality you can get for sure. Mm -hmm. But I think it certainly seems to be more suitable either for those who really want to jumpstart the movie yeah, and get to the movie right away or, and, and really tease the rights to producers and agents right away mm -hmm. or for fantasy or YA and, and things that are more high concept to shoot. You mentioned YA. I saw the trailer for the Kendra Blake series. I haven't, I haven't read the books myself, but I know they're super popular. So it definitely made me want to read it even more. Oh, right on. Well, that's, that's the idea. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> that snake was a great actor, right? It was, it was. And you know what? I'm not a fan of snakes, but it still convinced me. <laughs> well, like, I, I think I have an idea of what I assume a book trailer is. And it's kind of like you mentioned, it's like an iMovie situation, yeah. like slideshow. But I think just in the last couple of years, they're really changed and effective. Mm -hmm. And then I think if anyone's like kind of thinking of an iMovie situation, that they should check out what you have created. Absolutely. All right. On. Thank you. And, and, you know, full disclosure, I'm not, my, my company is not the only one doing this. There's some very innovative stuff being done right now and experimentation. And I think we've largely just scraped the surface of what's possible. That's pretty cool. And I was going to ask as well, because you mentioned, uh, I guess, movie deals and things like that. With that set aside, what kind of reception do you find of these titles that have movie trailers attached to them? Attached to them sorry. Um, what kind of reception do you find that they get? Do authors and publishers notice a big difference? I mean, I'm assuming they do because otherwise you wouldn't be in business. But I was just mm. curious about what kind of uh, shift the book trailer would bring. It's really case by case. And it, it depends how active you are in promoting it, how you're promoting it. The best case scenario is that the whether it's the author, it's the publisher, both ideally, how how they view what they have. I mean, if they're... Let, let's say, you know, the typical example, and, and this is true of, of big publishers, and I understand that they have, you know, a huge marketing uh, mm -hmm. structure in place and everything like that. But typically what I see is that the bigger publishers will produce a trailer and then they'll do an ad buy on, say, um, you know, EW, USA Today, Pop Sugar, one of those. Mm -hmm. things. And it'll be a, an exclusive run for a few days and then it'll be on YouTube. There's not a lot of promotion of the video done after that. The video is just kind of there existing, mm -hmm. which is great. Um, you know, let's say, if, you know, for Penguin or something like that, who has a huge following on YouTube. So they get the views automatically and people are looking for it. For someone who's indie and maybe, let's say, has a smaller audience or not, I, I don't think it really it matters. I mean, if you have no audience, you can certainly benefit from the video because it's like, here I am. And, you know, you set yourself apart from the fold in a big way. For sure. You know, I, I think that in terms of what to do with, I think the question really is what to do with the videos once you have yeah. them. Yeah. One thing that we do is we offer different uh, length versions of the trailer. So let's say a bigger 90 second trailer is produced. You can make a package of like five Instagram ready 10 to 20 second interpretations of that so that you're not constantly uploading the same thing. And these are also good for being like, timeline photos or video whatever you call it on Facebook when you have the, the video timeline photo thing oh yeah uh, you know so there's lots of lots of purposes that they can serve that's pretty cool because then the author after that doesn't have to worry about cutting everything and just mm -hmm. repurposing footage and stuff like that it's it's good that you guys provide that complete package absolutely and it's a huge time saver and and you know also just sort of disseminating the video into the world what we do as part of our distribution is we'll reach out to blogs and websites who are kind of connected with your story or, you know, your genre or whatever you're, you're writing about. And, you know, they, they love that stuff because they don't, they don't see a lot of, 
I mean, they see some, but they don't see a ton of high quality book trailers. So when they do, even now, as popular as it is, it still kind of sets you apart. Definitely. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. And I, I saw on your website, I don't know, I don't know if it overlaps with uh, what you were just explaining. Um, I saw that you have different types of uh, distribution plans. Is that what you were referring to now? It was, exactly. So okay. we, we have it set up, um, and it's, it's the distribution and PR of the video. Oh, okay. Basically. So we get the video out there. We, um, we, we do all the uploads, get it set up online. Um, we do blog blasts, landing pages. We're actually thinking of starting a podcast. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It is a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> it, I know. I'm having a blast doing them. So. <laughs> That's it's awesome. Inspired me. Another thing that I saw on your website as well is that you guys also do audiobook recordings and uh, book covers and things like that. Is that something that you've always done or is it a new path? That you're taking? It, no, it's kind of new. The audiobooks we started, I and mean, we, we started to do it because we were getting requests. Mm -hmm. And then we realized, wow, yeah, we're totally set up for this. And again, just like, you know, just like with the trailer production and anything we do, we want to offer it at a price that's less than anyone else does for the most for part. Sure. So we want to maintain high quality. At the same time, you know, the, we've had, if we're being honest, we've had a recognition that within at least the self publishing industry, a whole other industry has been created mm -hmm, uh, yeah. in terms of getting <laughs> getting your book ready for the world and or publishing it and services like that. And very often they just charge too much mm -hmm. for what they're doing from what yeah, I see. No, I was very curious about the audio because we're hoping to have uh, audio books soon for KWL for authors as well. So that would be pretty cool to have a, a service that authors can go to to have yes. that. Recording. Yeah, and, and so we've we've sort of come up with it by necessity. So the audiobook came up, and then it became a thing that that we do. The same with book covers. You know, we had an author that didn't have a book cover, and then so we started our own book cover department. And mm -hmm. now it's it, well, the cool thing about that is that it can potentially be branded with your video. So there's uh, yeah. integration. That's amazing. Integrated I'm, marketing. I know. I <laughs> yeah. never even considered that. And I promise my last question about this, I'm so curious about actors and stuff like that. Does the author also have control of, let's say, which narrator they get? So I guess you would do like a casting situation, like let them oh, sure. do samples and things like that? Sure, sure. I mean, the, the best case scenario, I, I'm not crazy about like voiceover guy uh -huh. in, the, in a world like that guy. But <laughs> I, I think it works better if, the voiceover comes from like as an excerpt from the book. Mm -hmm. And in that case, usually it's a, it's a character from the book who's narrating. That's pretty cool. Can you talk a bit more about the audiobook process? Like compared to a trailer, how long does it take? Um, and then your pricing compared to other uh, audiobook retailers or creators? Um, sure. I, it's, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. It's um, the casting is the same mm -hmm. as, as a trailer. You know, you, we audition the voice actors and then the author picks who they like. It really depends on the length of, the book, I think we did one recently that was about 250 pages and uh, it was a few days of recording. Just, mm -hmm. I mean, not back to back, but over the course of a week or two weeks. I think that was 4,500 for that one. Okay. That's With everything, the cleanup, the editing, the compression, everything. That's awesome. And so you've mentioned that a video can give an author an advantage across platforms. And I think uh, Goodreads and BookBub was mentioned. Can you talk about how, what this advantage looks like and like how someone can take a video and use it? Sure. In different areas. Sure, sure, sure. I'm not familiar with BookBub and how they integrate video, but I, I will be after this <laughs> podcast is over. As far as Goodreads, they kind of work the same way Amazon works in that in order to get your video for example, on Goodreads, you have to click on the author's name and then go to the author's page, and then there's an option to upload video that way. I've seen it on the main book pages, both of Amazon and Goodreads, but I'm not sure that's something that everyone has access to or how. So I've kind of like always felt that Amazon, especially being the primary seller of books in, on the planet, should integrate video onto their book page, much like their movie pages look. Because if you go to any of their movie pages, it's an experience. You, know, you have all this information there. You have the trailer. And it's certainly a great way to sell movies or at least tell people, tell people about movies. But I think books should get the same treatment. And it's, it's tricky because if the video is only accessible on the author's page, then you have to click on that page to get there or to see it. But a lot of people don't. I mean, most people don't. Mm -hmm. I know when I'm looking at a, at a book on Amazon, I'm just looking at the book page. So 
they've made it they've made it possible for some i don't know if it's universal yet or what that entails in order to make that a universal feature on amazon uh it might be a ton of redesign or recoding that i'm just unaware of but i think that once they do it's going to really turn the whole industry upside down in a good way mm -hmm. that's pretty cool what has been your favorite trailer to make so far or is there a favorite genre that you find works really well for that genre not so much i mean it's it works for every genre and and that's sort of the joy in doing this is you get to dive into a new book each time and discover what makes it special and and you know what the marketability is what's cinematic about it in all honesty my favorite was probably my own <laughs> that's fair <laughs> for my novel i mean i really i went i had a blast doing it and you know we were about 2 years into the business when my book was published book yeah i just went all out i went i Kind of through that, I invented the character trailer, which is something that we offer, where you know we had the main trailer, and then we were having so much fun shooting that went off with a few of the actors and just shot separate little vignettes with them. But for, for me, it was a blast, not just because it was my own material, but because I got a real taste of what it's like and the sacrifices involved in making a trailer, or <clears throat> sorry, an adaptation of your work, because there's a giant letting go point. For sure. When you're doing something like this, when you realize, okay, you're not, you don't have to get the entire plot in. And in fact, you can play around a bit. And once I let go and stop being completely literal in ways that the audience would never understand anyway, uh, with certain details, character plots, things like that, it was very freeing. And, and new characters kind of emerged in mm -hmm. a way, like they would if you were making a film that served the story better. So it was really fun and, and a really interesting way to, to, stuff that's pretty cool can you mention that you have different direct other different directors working on specific genres of trailers or how does that process like of creation like you pick your own director and your actors or no it's it's all pretty much done in-house um i have about 22 directors on staff that we use and it, it depends really it's just it's not necessarily by genre as it is by story and, and who's right for a particular story tone wise or or geographically, because sometimes we'll have books that are set, you know, all over the world or, you know, we did one in Iceland, for example, which was set in the Arctic. Oh, wow. And the director and I were talking about it and we were like, okay, the choices here are we could go up to Mammoth here, which is a mountain close to Los Angeles mm -hmm. and fake it. He's like, or, and he showed, <laughs> me, he showed me the budget. We could actually go to Iceland, me and my assistant cameraman and, and get the real thing. Yeah. So that's what, that's what ended up happening. Awesome. That's a pretty cool trip. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish I had. <laughs> is there, I, now going a little bit more personal back to you, uh, is there anything that you've been loving lately? Any books, any films, anything that you want to share with everyone on the podcast? I have been really into Netflix documentaries, to be honest. Um, like for the last... Fire Festival? Two, three <laughs> Fire Festival. Oh my Fire God, Festival. Yes. <laughs> What have been some good documentaries people should Netflix check? Netflix is doing... Um, I actually just watched, what was the last one? I watched the Ted Bundy documentary. I watched the Lorena, like really happy mm -hmm. stuff. Um, I mean, you don't go to a documentary for happy stuff, I don't. I, don't <laughs> I feel like you're right, totally. As far as books, I'm right now I'm reading the Walt Disney biography and I'm, oh, I'm cool. loving it. That's interesting. Yeah, it's really good. He's a very hey. inspiring guy. He started with nothing. I don't know his story. Now I feel bad that I don't. <laughs> well, you should read we only book. know the stories that he told. <laughs> And then, so how can an author contact you if they're interested in any of your services? So our website is film-14.com. You can actually email me directly, adam at film-14.com, and uh, probably get a reply within 30 seconds. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's so cool. Thank you so much, Adam, for talking to us and for taking the time to go so deep into all these details. Yeah. We, I know we're very nosy, very curious. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. So we hope you enjoyed our episode with Adam. Make sure to check out his website. We'll have a link to it on the blog to see all the different trailers that he has created because there are many and some of them are really fantastic. I really recommend that you watch all of the ones that they have on YouTube. It's super fun. As always, I hope you take the time to review and subscribe to the podcast. And we're also on Google Play now, so make sure to check us out on there. But thank you so much for listening each week. We really appreciate it. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye, guys. Thank you for listening to the Kobo Writing Life podcast. 
where we provide insights and stories from leaders and experimenters in the world of self-publishing. If you want even more information about growing your Kobo sales, check out our blog or find us on social. And if you're just finding us and ready to start your self-publishing journey today, sign up for free at kobo.com slash writing life. Until next time, happy writing.